Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis, support.greatdetectives.net. You can also become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month. Just go over to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of Casey Crime Photographer. We are fast-forwarding to March of 1950, the original air date, March 2nd, 1950, and the title is The Bad Little Babe. This is Ken Roberts, inviting you to listen to another adventure of Casey, crime photographer. Ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Our adventure for tonight, Bad Little Babe. <laughs> Night. In his rather untidy bachelor apartment, Casey slumps comfortably in an ancient, overstuffed chair, reading a popular mystery story. Oh, just when I'm about to find out who's done it. Hello. Hey, Casey. Yeah? What time do you go to work tonight? Well, 12 o'clock. I'm on the lobster shift this week. Who is it? Then in about half an hour from now, you'll start walking toward the garage where you keep your car. Yeah? Don't do it. Don't do If you do, you'll be killed. Huh? Killed, I said. Men are watching your apartment house now, waiting for you to come out. Call the police and tell them to get those men. Wait a minute, who are you? Never mind that. Phone the police and don't leave. Now, look, look here. Oh, you're talking tell... more. Goodbye. Hey, hey. Huh. Oh, nuts. It's just a gag. Hmm. Hmm. Bureau, Captain Logan. This is Casey, pal. Oh? Hey, look, I, I'm probably wasting your time, pal, but I, I just got a screwy phone call that might be on the level. Screwy phone call? Yeah, now, if this turns out to be somebody's idea of a practical joke, I know how you'll use the needle, Logan, but uh, <clears throat> a gal just phoned me. I didn't recognize her voice, and she wouldn't give her name, but here's what she said. <laughs> Whoever the gal was who phoned you, Casey, I don't think she was a practical joker. No? Now, uh, before I sneaked up here to your apartment by the back way, Sergeant Brett and I spotted a car parked up your block with two guys in it who registered as Red Hunts, all right? Why should they be laying for me? You're always sticking your neck out, aren't you? If you'd stick to press oh, photography... Oh, Logan. I'm no different from any other newspaper guy in a crime beat. And I haven't been sticking my neck out lately. That remains to be seen. And we'll see when we land those bugs with the goods. Well, how are you going to do that little thing? Now, by the time you leave this joint, the street will be completely covered by cops. Now, you walk out of this building alone and start towards your garage. Sergeant Brett will instruct his men not to act until they see you definitely threatened. Definitely threatened? When and if the birds in that car or anybody on the street flash guns, the cops will close in. Yeah, I suppose they're there just a little too late on that close-in. Then I'll be the late Mr. Casey, I suppose. I'm hoping that won't happen, pal. Oh, you're hoping? Well, sure I am. <laughs> oh, put on your hat and coat, Casey. We mustn't keep your would-be killers waiting. Uh-huh. <laughs> Suspicious cars way up the block there, Casey. A black sedan. And a gunner will probably wait until you're nicely outlined under the next street light before... Yeah, I'm going to make a swell target there, Logan, you know. It'll be safer than in church. There are at least a dozen cops covering you. I can't even see one cop. You don't think I told Brett to post him where they could be seen, do you? There's his signal that everything's all set. Now, he's in a car around the corner. By the time you get under that street light... His driver will be passing that black sedan and ready for any funny business. Okay, I'll step out of this doorway now and get going. All right. Here I go. Don't worry, pal. Oh, I'm not worried. No, not at all. Ah, oh, well, the whole thing's probably a gag. Some dame with a moron sense of humor. <clears throat> There'll be a nice big clay pigeon under that street light, though. 
Well, uh, this is it, I guess. Well, nothing happened. I knew this was just a gag. Are you okay, Casey? Yeah, they seem to be all in one piece, Logan, but a couple of slugs whizzed by awful yeah, close. Well, guys have everything under control up there. Come on. Yeah, I want to see these mugs. The sergeant, what did you do to him? Well, we couldn't take chances, Captain. Yeah, both dead, huh? Well, you had no choice. Casey, take a look at these stiffs. Do you recognize them? No. Never saw either one of them before. That means they were hired to get you. But why? Come on down to headquarters, Casey, where we can look for the answer in comfort. You and Captain Logan ain't figured out who was behind that attempt to mow you down last night, huh, Casey? No, I think... I figured it out. Now, and Everything you... points to Joe Kirby, Casey, and you know I don't it. know anything of the kind. Kirby looks on me as nothing more than a nuisance. Take the trouble to have me bumped off. Well, bumping a guy off ain't much trouble for that Joe Kirby. He's got the smoothest working crime organization in this town. You've been much more than a nuisance to him. He knows you've done your best to trace the murder of Sam Alberts to him. I haven't gotten and... anywhere with my tracing, have I? Well, he may think you've gotten further than you have. And you didn't let me finish about his reasons. Now, you've tried to interfere with his personal affairs. Oh, you mean that... I uh, mean Sandra Lamson. You've done everything possible to keep her away from him. I've got nowhere with that project, either. Who's Sandra Lamson? Oh, poor little rich gal who's seen too many glamorous gangsters in the movies. And he, well, she's fallen for Joe Kirby, and he likes her. You butted into that sort of thing, Casey? Look, I've known Sandra ever since she was a kid. Her father was Judge Lamps. He was a grand guy, and he did me a whole lot of favors. Yeah, he was a judge who got killed in that auto smasher. That's right, about six months ago. Yeah. The kid's only 19. She's got no relatives except a couple of old maid aunts, and, and she's pretty, mm. too. So, to protect her from the wolves, our Mr. Casey elected himself her guardian. Well, and somebody had to. She's a good kid. She's a bad little babe. And you're simply being stubborn. And there's still another thing that ties those gunmen up with Kirby. There's nothing and... that ties them up with Kirby. Look, will you ever let me finish what I start to say? Well, and you... All right, go ahead. Thanks. Who do you suppose the woman was who saved your life last night? The gal who called you on the phone? I've told you, I don't know. Well, she must have had a motive for a tip-off. Naturally. Emma Humphreys had a swell motive. Well, Emma Humphreys? She's Kirby's old girlfriend. Yes, Ethelbert. Until that Lansing day came along, Emma Humphreys' standing was number one. And lately, she's been given the old gradual freeze. Yeah, that's right. She must be boiling at the Lanson kid. And, Casey, you're the only person who's tried to break up the affair between her and Kirby, so... Mm. She sure had a motive for tipping you off, Casey. Yeah, but I... Well, I'm going to have a talk with Emma Humphreys. You know, you're finally waking up. I still think you're doping this thing wrong, Annie. But just to show you that I'm not stubborn... That I, will... I want to see. Okay, all right, now. But wait a minute, though. I can't, be... I can't go direct to Emma... If she gave me that tip, and if Kirby was behind those would-be killers... Laura, then... you'd be putting her in a spot. Oh, yeah, but I can't... Darn that phone. Always, when I'm busy listening... Oh, gee, we got to dope out a safe way to get to her, Annie. Blue Note Cafe, Ethelbert speaking. Let me think. All right, think. I... Right, just a minute. Your city desk, Casey. What's it? Oh, not... you keep on thinking, Annie, while I go to... Mm -hmm. oh. Hello, it's Casey speaking. <laughs> Underhill Road in Garland Park, yeah... I got... Hey, wait a minute. We're not on duty, Burke. Oh. You thought this assignment had interest us because... Uh, <clears throat> that's your theory about last night, huh? The body's been identified as... What? Thank you, Burke. Yes, we'll start right away. Mr. Casey. Oh, boy. Let's not figure a fairly safe Forget thing. it, Anne. Forget it. Huh? Emma Humphreys has been murdered. Emma Humphreys? Murdered. Right. The news stories about my life being saved by a woman's phone call hit the streets this morning. Casey. Yes, and our city editor has exactly the same idea you have. <laughs> Emma Humphreys was taken for an old-fashioned ride, Miss Williams. The doc says she was killed around noon today. Shot twice with a thirty-two revolver. We have the bullets. And, of course, you know who Emma Humphreys was, Captain Lowe. Oh, yes. And I've given orders to have Joe Kirby brought to headquarters as soon as he can be found. Uh, Annie has a theory about uh, Emma Humphreys and Joe Kirby Logan. So have I, Casey. I've concluded she was your tipster last night, and that he found out she spoiled his murder plan for you. Uh, 
You know, pal, so have I now. Uh, Kirby's here, Captain. Oh, bring him in, Sergeant. Casey, you keep your trap shut to this guy. I'm keeping my trap shut. You too, Miss Williams. We know. Good evening, Captain. Hello, Kirby. You've been told what's happened. The Miss Humphreys. Yes, the news came as a frightful shock. I can imagine. Yeah. Oh, Casey, Miss Williams, please forgive me for not noticing you before. My state of mind... Skip it, Kirby. If that's the way you want it. How can I help you, Captain? Emma Humphreys was killed around noon today. You have an alibi for that time, of course. Why should I? As it happens, I was having a conference with the president of the Warwick Square Bank between 11 o'clock and noon today. Yeah, the Warwick Square Bank is way downtown. Emma Humphreys was bumped off way uptown. Yes. Now, where were you last night when we cops interrupted that shooting party prepared for Casey? Why, I was having supper with a lady in the tiger room of the Hotel Bombay. Dozens of people will remember I was there. Uh, who was the lady with you? Miss Sandra Lampson. Nuts. This line of questioning is most ridiculous, Captain. Save that injured innocent stuff for the jury. Casey's been getting in your hair, and you wanted him out for keeps. You figured Emma Humphreys tipped him off to your plan, so you had her finished. Prove that. We'll prove a lot of things on you eventually. You know, you're not as smart as you think you are, Kirby. You made some big blunders when Sam Alberts was murdered. Casey! What do you mean? I told you to keep your mouth shut. Okay, Logan. Now that's all, Kirby. Get out. Very well, Captain. Casey, you've shown such an interest in Miss Sandra Lampson. I must give you some news about her. And me. Well? We're going to be married. Married? Yes, I thought you'd like to know. Are oh, you dirty louse? Casey, before I let you ruin the life of Judge Lamson's kid, I... Let me hey, go, Logan. Let me get out. Let me go. Oh, all right. Okay. Get out now, Kirby. Fast. Goodbye. Captain. Williams. Come on. Casey. Right, hey. Casey, you're going to lose control of your temper once too often around here. I'm sorry, Logan, but when he said... Stop he... fussing about what happens to Sandra Lamson. Well, you don't know her as I do, That's Anne. what you think. I can get a better line than one of my own sex in five minutes than you can get in a lifetime. I bet you're right, Miss Williams, but forget about the Lamson kid. Casey, I know you've been doing some private snooping into the Sam Alberts killing. Now, what did you mean by telling Kirby he'd make some big blunders? Oh, well, that was just a bluff, Logan. Well, anyhow, for the first time since I've known that fish-eyed crook, he looked a little scared. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah. You made my bluff sound better by shutting me up. Now you think we really have some. Well, since we have it, that gets us nowhere. No, it doesn't. Hey, can I use your phone, Logan? I want to call Sandra Lamson. What for? Now, to see if she'll make a date with me. I want to see her alone. Maybe I can talk some sense into her. <laughs> into the library, Casey. It's more cozy in here. Okay, Sandra. I uh, used to talk to your father in here. This was father's favorite room. Sit down. Oh, all right, thanks. Not way over there. You're on the sofa with me. Oh. Uh, I uh, imagine you've been in touch with Joe Kirby since I met him at police headquarters yesterday. Huh? I had lunch with him today. Hmm. You told me you and he are going to be married. Is that true? Why shouldn't it be? Kirby's a crook. He's a rat and a murderer. So you've told me before. He's been lucky and clever, but now he's slipping. Slipping? He displayed bad judgment in attempting to have me shot night before last. He displayed even worse judgment when he had Emma Humphreys killed for tipping me off. He had nothing to do with either oh, of those. Sandra, get wise to yourself. How dare you talk to me like What's that? What's the matter with... Because I was a friend of your father's. Because I think you're a right kid. Now you listen to me, Sandra. Listen to what? I'm not a child. Give me some proof that what you say is true. You told me Joe was responsible for the murder of Sam Alberts. Casey, if you can convince me that he was behind the murder of Alberts, I give you my word that I'll never see him again. No. You want to know what the cops and I have dug up about the Alberts killing? It's huh? your duty to tell me. Yeah. You just made a little mistake, Sandra. Mistake? Well, your hammy gestures knocked this lampshade crooked. Lampshade? Cute little microphone you have underneath. Let's see where the wire from it leads. Casey! I see, a tape recorder. Hidden behind the sofa you insisted that I sit upon. 
Yeah. You were to play nice and find out what had been discovered about the Alberts killing. Kirby had this recording outfit set up and showed you how to work it. Okay, Sandra. I'll leave the thing turned on and give your boyfriend an earful. Kirby, I don't care what happens to Sandra anymore. She's become the same sort of rat that you are. But get this, Kirby. Some way, I'm going to pay you off big. You'll regret that, Casey. Goodbye, Sandra. You've been the biggest mistake I've made about this case. I'll try not to make any more. That Sandra Lampson sure turned out to be the bad little babe Miss Williams called her. Huh, <laughs> Casey? Yeah. And don't, don't uh, rub it in, Ethelbert. Well, she used to be a good kid, Annie. From what you've told us, Casey, you talked pretty big into that recording machine about paying Kirby off. How are you going to make good? I don't know. I was sore and shooting my big mouth off. But you've made his grudge against you more personal than ever. I wish Captain Logan hadn't let you talk him out of having you guarded. Logan knows I got sources of information that completely dry up if there's a smell of cops around. You got some crook in mind, Casey? No, no, no. But I passed the word that the paper's willing to pay plenty for information, which it is. And in the meantime, you may walk into another trap. Forget it, kid. I'm keeping my eyes open. Mm -hmm. One of a few times in my life, as a matter of fact, I'm toting a gun. You really are? Yeah, Logan insists on it. The darn thing feels like a lead weight in my pocket. Well, Annie, it's from 8 o'clock. We... I don't have to go to work till midnight. You'd like to see a movie? Huh? Uh, oh, excuse me. One down the street. No, I don't or... think so, Casey. Blue Note Cafe, uh, Ethelbert speaking. Well, why not? Because I'm so worried about you, I wouldn't enjoy oh. it. Just a second. Yeah. You're you wanted on the nothing. phone, Casey. Well, who is it? Well, a guy wouldn't give his name, but he said to tell you it's important. Oh, probably isn't. Hello, Casey speak. Yeah? Wait a minute. Who is this? Lou? Okay, okay, I'll start right away. Where are you starting right away? Uh, well, that was an old pal of mine, Annie. You wanted to see me. I promised to go over to his hotel. Okay, well, I gotta hurry. So long, you two. So long. Casey lied to us, Ethelbert. Miss Williams. I think he did. <laughs> Okay, Lou, hop in the car. Get going quick, Casey. You didn't tell anybody I phoned you. Nope. I never sing on a tipster. I've got one that'll make your ears stand out to hear. Lou, you're one of Joe Kirby's mob. For all I know, you may be planning to pull me into a trap. Well, I'd figure that way, too, if I was you. Well, here's my gun, Casey. Take it. That proves to you I'm leveling. Well, it helps. It just happens that I have a gap with me tonight, fellow. It's pointed at your belly. Under my overcoat. I'm going to continue to keep it handy. Word's going around that the rag you work for will pay high for information. That's correct. But I've never known you to sell information. Well, I'm not selling it now. I'm giving it to you. I've never known you to give anything either. That's because up to now I've never had a good enough reason. Casey, I, I carried a torch for Emma Humphreys. What, you? Yeah. No, I never got anywhere with her. She was Kirby's gal, and Kirby was my boss. The guy can hope, can't he? I hope that she'd give me a tumble after the boss began making a play for that Sandra Lampson babe and edging Emma out. I never thought the two of them would kill Emma. What? The two of them? Yeah. Kirby made the plan, and the babe did the shooting. Sandra Lampson? She hated Emma. She wanted her out of the way. When your paper told how you were saved by a woman's phone call that night... She offered to take Emma for our last ride. You're sure of that? I made it my business to be sure. But, look, now I bow out, Casey. You, together, I ever talk to you. Payoff's got to be completely yours. Well, how can I prove anything? The cops have the bullets that killed Emma, haven't they? Yes. You're going to find the gap those slugs were fired from. Yeah, where? Sandra Lampson's bedroom in her home. She didn't throw that murder gun away. It's a gold plate of 32 that Kirby had specially made up for her. You find it wrapped in a silk nightgown in the second drawer of a bureau. How can you know that? I went to her house tonight looking for that gun. I knew this was the servant's night off and that she and Kirby were having dinner together downtown. Then they'll be at the theater for the next couple of hours. you have the joint all to yourself. There's a trellis you can climb to a bedroom window. 
You might have planted the murder gun in her room yourself, Lou. Oh, are you still trying to kid yourself? That skirt's on the level? No, I guess I can't. But I don't trust you and Nicholsworth. So you and I are going there together. Okay, if that's the way you want it. Yes. You'll be just a step ahead of me, Lou. With both your gun and my gun pointed at your back. <laughs> I got the window up, Casey. Keep your voice down, Lou. I tell you, there's nobody home here. All right, we'll see. I climb inside. Remember, I'm right behind you with these guns. Close the drapes over that window. And circle your flashlight around. Okay. You see, we're all alone here. This is the bureau? Yeah. Second drawer. You open it. Sure. Here's the little gun wrapped in a nighty, just like I told you. Convinced? Yeah. You finally sold me on your story, Lou. Lou's a swell liar. What? Yeah, this is a 44 yeah. you feel at your back, Casey. Drop those guns or I'll blow you in two. Okay, Kirby. Yeah, I, I got him, boss. <laughs> hey, this is like taking candy from a baby. The boss was waiting for you in that clothes closet, Sap. The boss and... And me, Casey. So you're in on this trap, too, son. I planned it. Give me my gun, Lou. I'm handling this. Here, Sandra. Go to it. <laughs> Put on the light so we can take a last good look at this chump. Sure. And what a chump you are, Casey. I'll tell the police I thought you were a burglar and that I shot you. I don't think they'll believe that story. It'll be impossible to prove that she wasn't just a poor, frightened girl all alone defending her home. You should have consulted me before you sent those hired gunmen off to Casey, <laughs> Joe. I might have had a simple and workable plan like this to give you then. I'll consult you about everything from now on, kid. You weren't allowed in on the first scheme to get rid of me, Sandra, were you? No. I'm afraid Mr. Kirby didn't altogether trust me until after he heard that tape recording in which you turned on me so unpleasantly. Well, he should have trusted you after you killed Emma Humphreys. <laughs> what a chump this guy is, boss. <laughs> Still believes some of the yarn I told him. But you... I took Emma for our last ride myself. I did the job just like you wanted, didn't I, Kirby? You've always followed my instructions to the letter, Lou. Uh, Casey... How close have you and the cops got to me on the Albert's bump off? You'll find out someday. <laughs> Didn't expect a different answer from you. Well, I'm not too worried. Get this over with, Sandra. I will, Joe. Because you've spilled everything I hoped you would. Huh? Put up your hands, you and Lou. Put them up or I'll shoot. Boss, Sandra. Get their guns, Casey. The guns they were foolish enough to put back in their oh, pockets. I got them. My own, too. But what is That's this? That's what I want to know. What is this double cross, Sandra? The ending of a game I've played ever since you killed my father, Mr. Kirby. He killed you. crazy. No. You drove him to suicide. Suicide? My father deliberately drove his car into a tree because Kirby had been blackmailing him to force his consent to our marriage. He left a letter telling me what you've done, Mr. Kirby. A letter I didn't let you know about until now when I'm able to send you to the chair. If you think the admission Lou and I made here can convict us of anything, you're nuts. We'll deny everything. My lawyer can make liars out of both of you. He won't be able to contradict the evidence of your own voices. Oh, well. You taught me the value of recording machines, Mr. Kirby. One hidden under the bed has been recording every word that's been said here. Boss. You, you lousy little... That'll rat. be all from you, Kirby. Sandra, you are one swell little babe. Call the cops. <laughs> It was really Sandra Lampson who phoned you the tip that gunmen were laying for you that night, huh, Casey? Yes, Ethelbert. Hmm. She had no idea, of course, that Emma Humphreys would be blamed and murdered for that tip. And Sandra purposely exposed the microphone under that lampshade, so I'd say, well, only what I did say. Miss Williams, you sure, you sure made a big mistake about that, Sandra Lampson. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not rub it in, I'm not going to. It's so easy for these superior females to underestimate the character reading ability of us men. Yeah. Women are very complicated females. Yeah. Huh? You, know, you know, men wouldn't have nearly as much trouble if it wasn't for all these women. Why, women... 
We could get along much when... Uh, there... Why, we've... They're interesting, though, aren't they? This adventure of crime photographer starring Stott Cotsworth as Casey came to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. Welcome back. Well, a really nice last-minute reversal that not only saves the day, but our hero's gallant heart. I also did appreciate at the start of the episode that Casey did take the... Uh, warning seriously, because he's had some episodes where he's been somewhat cavalier about his safety and almost paid a price. Well, now I want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Harold, Patreon supporter since September 2017, currently supporting the program at the Master Detective level of $15 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for your support, Harold. And that will do it for today. I do want to encourage you, if you are enjoying this podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. We will be back next Monday with another episode of Casey Crime Photographer. But join us back here tomorrow for Mr. Chameleon, where... I've been stabbed! I've been stabbed! Oh, no. Oh, ghastly... Wilfred, did you see that? Yes, I saw it. And I saw the man who stabbed him. Oh. Catch him! Catch him, somebody! The man in the gray suit! Don't let him get away! What's happened? It's murder! A man's been stabbed to death! Somebody said a man in a gray suit did it. And sometime later, at Central Headquarters in the office of the police commissioner, the commissioner sits talking to Mr. Chameleon the great detective who is known and feared throughout the underworld. The commissioner is saying... And that's all we have to go on, Chameleon. Some unidentified man who was with a woman cried out that a man in a gray suit did it. Well, that's something, Commissioner. Maybe the two witnesses will come forward and give us a more complete description of the killer. But you know how people are. Scared to death to get involved in a thing like this. Certainly the killer wasn't lacking in nerve, stabbing a man to death in the early evening on a crowded street. And a man like Carl Lynch... Yes. We belong to several of the same clubs. Carl Lynch was a wealthy bachelor high up in the banking business. Patron of the arts. Hmm. Killer had his nerve to strike him down right under the nose of the police. Well, that seems to annoy you, Chameleon. Well, certainly it does. See, it's um, three hours since Lynch was murdered. The witnesses really should turn up very soon. For their sake, they should come to the police. The longer they stay away, the more dangerous it is for everyone. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.